Well, hey, welcome back. And you guessed it, we're going to talk yet even more about pentatonic scales. This time, we're going to talk about major pentatonic and major pentatonic sounds. You know, some people out there don't even talk about pentatonics in the major form. They say that you're going to play a minor pentatonic shape over a major chord. But I think that's kind of confusing. So I like to think about two sounds being associated with the pentatonic, a minor and a major. And truth be told, I have a lot of students that say, I just can't get my hands and ears wrapped around the major pentatonic sound. Well, a lot of times it has to do with the music you're playing. And before you ask or comment, yeah, I'm going to do a video about combining them, and that's my favorite thing to do. But uh, we really want to make sure that we understand how to get the most out of getting major type sounds out of a major pentatonic scale, and how the fingerings that we've learned, and even the licks in a lot of ways, uh, for the minor pentatonics will really just translate pretty easily. But it's all about where you land. Sometimes it's about where you start and where you finish. And this is going to be one of those instances. So we'll do a bunch of different things. We're going to play over just one chord to kind of get our ear and our hands wrapped around it. We're going to play over a blues. And then I thought maybe we would try a track maybe in the key of E. That sounds kind of Almond Brothers E. And that's really what I associate uh, the sound or the band, you know, I associate with a major pentatonic sound is Southern rock, um, a lot of country, stuff like that. But I thought, man, this is going to be a good exercise in venturing into that land. But first, I'm going to play a little bit, and then we're going to do a theory discussion because I want it all to make sense. Why is there a major? Why is there a minor? Why can't you play an A minor pentatonic scale over an A major chord? You can, but your ears are going to tell you something about that when you do it, so give it a shot. All right, so I'm going to jam a little bit first over just one chord in the key of C. I'll use C major pentatonic, and we'll talk about why that's also A minor pentatonic as well. But see, I'm taking you along with all these videos. We talked about the minor pentatonic scale, unlocking five boxes. We had our don't call it the blues scale video, uh, and that was a lot of fun. This is a nice transition, and we're going to start to put all these pieces together, and I think it's going to hopefully unlock the shapes and unlock some music for you. All right, so let's jump in. So that was a little one chord jam in the key of C there, and I thought I'd make it simple just by playing over one chord so that we could really hear how the scale works and, and really kind of falls in line uh, with, with just one chord and how I could kind of target the root note there. I think we're starting out playing this kind of stuff and we're improvising. Let's take it easy. Let's try to really just target root notes and find our footing within the scale, if we will. But before we do that, a little bit of housekeeping. Let's make sure that we know where to find tracks and tabs. It's in the description below. And for those of you that are new to finding links in YouTube, uh, you can go in the description below the video, scroll down, and it'll say read more or show more, something like that. And you'll see, once you click that, a whole bunch of links for stuff that takes you outside of YouTube. My website, where you can get the tabs and tracks, all kinds of stuff. All right, so there's that. Um, while you're there, slide on over to the right, hit the subscribe button, and uh, you'll be able to be notified every time I drop a new lesson, video, live stream, et cetera, et cetera. But I'll bug you to do that later in the video too. All right, so we also wanna talk about where the pentatonics come from. Now, in previous videos, we talked about the pentatonic scale being a five note scale, which indeed it is, penta five, but it comes from something, and it comes from the C major scale. And this, the major scale, well, it comes from a major scale, not necessarily the C major scale. It could be any major scale you want. But let's talk about the C major scale, um, just to kind of get a basis of where this stuff comes from. Like I said, really, it's sort of the mother of all things harmonic. Um, anything you can think of can be traced back to the major scale, which we probably know as Do, Re, Mi, Fa, So, La, Ti, Do. So in the key of C there, we have a C, D, E, F, G, A, 
B, and C. And we talk about uh, a lot of times those uh, notes having numbers. One, two, three, four, five, six. Now the interesting thing here in a major scale is that the first note, the C, and the sixth note, the A, one, two, three, four, five, six, have a relationship that's called the relative. The A is what's called the relative minor of C. So what that means is, let's think about it simply, like that, um, you know, the C has an evil twin, and the evil twin is the A, or the A minor, all right? Um, or it's the, you know, it's opposite world. <laughs> so if you started the scale from the key of, from the C note and played it up, it has a very resolved and major type of sound. But if we took that same group of notes, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and started it like that, A, it has a minor tonality and a minor pull to it. But if we play a C chord and then a C scale starting from the C note, you can hear how they all re it resolves nicely. So are you telling me, Corey, that there's a two for one in every scale? There absolutely is, every major scale. So if you start it from the C and play C to C, you're gonna get that major tonality. And if you start it from an A, you're going to get an A minor tonality. Now this is just for this instance. Don't go run wild with it now and get crazy, okay? So you need to know that before we talk about the next step, which is major and minor pentatonic type stuff, which I'll make an entire video of linking those together. It's gonna to be fun. But I thought, instead of doing that, let's just talk about major today. And let's talk about how we extract five notes from, from a major scale, in this case, a C major scale. So I'm gonna put a graphic up right here that's going to show um, the notes in a C major pentatonic. And those notes will be C, D, E, G, and A. So C, D, E, G, and A. And then of course it starts over, C, D, Now I'm gonna flash up another graphic that shows the notes in the A minor pentatonic scale, which are A, C, D, E, and G. Now you can see that they both contain the same notes, just like that major minor relative thing we did, but now we're doing it in a five note sequence. So if you start that five note sequence from C, you get a C major pentatonic sound. If you start that same five note sequence from an A, you get an A minor pentatonic sound, okay? So essentially, if you know all five patterns for A minor pentatonic, which is what a lot of us start doing because it sounds great over rock and blues, you know all five patterns for C major pentatonic, okay? Because they're the exact same scale. It's all about where you begin and end the tonality and what you emphasize and the emphasis that you're putting on those. So that's why when I was playing that, that thing, I was kind of, if somebody went and played an A minor, So they're exactly the same thing. We're gonna talk about a couple other tracks too that we can do so we really um, start to flesh it out a little bit more and, and how I can sort of take it over more than just one chord. But let's talk about this. So I'm not gonna run through all five patterns because you know them already if you know A minor pentatonic. But here's what's really cool. Let's start that track up. This ought to be fun. Just thought about this. Let's start this track again and if you look back at my last two pentatonic lessons on all five patterns and then the one I call don't call call it the blues scale, I um I talk about this this connecting run. So we can use that as well. All right, so let me play over the track a little bit. I'll use the one that we did in the beginning of the video, and we're just gonna walk through some scales and the connecting run that we worked on in two previous videos. All right, let's try it. 
Here we go. Just the scale. Three, four. just using the scale over top of a just a regular old kind of little C root fifth you know boogie woogie style uh, bar chord groove there All right so we can take this even further and let's let's try to do that maybe in another key because I feel if you do that you might start to really understand the relative major minor aspect and um, this is tricky if you're not really clear on it. That's why I wanted to give you some music theory background and then also nothing really explains it like, like an example, right? And sometimes just playing over one chord will really help. But you wanna think about um, where you're hearing this already and where you're gonna use this. So let's jump into another example, another key, and then we'll talk even more. <laughs> So there's a progression in E for you that I kind of did some hopefully Almond Brothers inspired sort of Southern rock. I tried to get as sort of, you know, soulful as I could with the bending and really picking some choice notes. And the cool thing is, is that when you're playing over progression like that, just about all of the notes you play will work pretty well over the chords that are going by. We're in the key of E there and we're going to be playing an E and then a B and a C sharp minor and an A. Now again, we're in the key of E major, not E minor. So E minor pentatonic, we would know it as maybe like. And you can hear already that it's probably not the best choice for that, right? So we talked about how we're gonna get to um, an E major sound. Now if we count up six from E, E, F sharp, G sharp, A, B, C sharp is the six. Okay, so if we played, uh, for instance, an E major scale and, and counted up six notes, it'd be E, F sharp, G sharp, A, B, C sharp. So what that immediately tells us is that C sharp is the relative minor of the key of E. Now remember what we studied, that each key has a relative minor and it's the evil twin, it's the Jekyll and Hyde, if you will, okay? So we're gonna go to C sharp minor pentatonic. 
which is also, you guessed it, E major pentatonic. Now, do you want a visual example of how to find that really quickly? So most of you probably have been playing your minor pentatonic scales a lot, right? So let's say you say, well, I know where E minor pentatonic is. It's right here on the 12th fret. But that's not gonna sound good over, over that chord. It's just not gonna work. Um, or work as well as a major will. So let's take those first two notes of the E minor shape. And all you're gonna do is you're gonna take that so that your pinky is now on the E on the 12th fret. So now your E's there on the pinky, and guess what? That's a C sharp there on the ninth fret. So what sounds good is as this, uh, as this loop is playing, let's do it, what the heck, why not? Here we are. So we have an E chord, and we're gonna play this scale. a little bit else more about what's going on and why it works there. So the notes that we're dealing with in the E major pentatonic for this example are E, F sharp, G sharp, B, and C sharp. So when the E chord's playing, we have our pick. We can play an E, which is, I'll let me slow it down for you there. The E, let's say that one there on the ninth fret third string. That works well. It's a root we can walk up to a G sharp. That, work, that note works really well. It's the major third of the chord. Next chord is B. The notes in that chord that would work really well are a B. Oh, sorry. And another note that works really well is an F sharp. because there's an F-sharp note in a B chord. And as that chord's going, as those chords are going by, you're getting ready for the next one, which is C-sharp minor. And in that chord, we have a C-sharp and an E that work really well. Also the G-sharp as well. So we have a lot of notes that work there. Oops, uh, here we go. Then the A chord comes around, and we our ear really wants us to play that A note, but that A note doesn't live in the major pentatonic scale, and that's okay, because we have an E and a C sharp, and both of those notes sound really good against an A chord. We have the major third and the fifth. So we'll have, let's slow it down a little bit. Oh, this is going to be fun. Here we go. Oh, I didn't want to go back to the beginning. Here we go. So we'll, it will give us a chance to kind of talk through it. Here's the E chord. The notes that work. The B chord. The C sharp minor. The A.
like a hand in a glove, folks. That's how it works. Now, the next step in our improvising might be to actually incorporate some E major scale sounds, not just E major pentatonic, but our hands and our brains at this point on our improvising are so geared towards pentatonic that it's, um, it's important to kind of get the most out of it and to, what I always say, see them like a transparency over top of the guitar in every key. So why is it important to learn all these scales in every key? Because you may say to yourself, well, I'm never gonna play a C sharp minor blues chord. Yeah, but you might play an E major song, which means you need to know C sharp minor and E major, which are the same thing, right? Okay, so what did we learn today? We learned where the pentatonic scales came from and the how they're extracted from the major scale. We learned about the major scale having a relative minor, which ultimately means what can go for a major scale can also go for the same relative minor. So for instance, the key of C is basically the same as the key of A minor. That's all you need to know for now. More on that in the future from me and a whole host of other people, I'm sure. Okay, so I think that made a lot of sense. And I want you to practice with both of these tracks. Um, and I'll put both, uh, both tracks in the folder and you're gonna be able, I'll, I'll put even, even put some major pentatonic tab stuff in there as well, so you really have a handle on it, okay? So I hope that makes sense. Now, if you don't know who I am, you've been here long enough, my name's Corey Congilio, I'm so happy that you're here learning guitar with me, and um, even more so, if you got something out of this fantastic, hit the like button, the thumbs up, and that tells YouTube, hey, people like this video. But even more so, I hope that you subscribe and ring the bell so you always know when I put out new content, again, tabs, tracks, all sorts of stuff are available in the video description. Hit me up in the comments. Reach out to me on my website. Uh, there's a whole host of things you can do in this day and age. Find me on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, anything new that comes along, and uh, we'll stay in touch and we'll learn guitar together. And don't forget, join me every Thursday at 2 p.m. for a vivacious live stream with a bunch of really great people that join me for an hour on Thursdays at 2 p.m. Eastern. Uh, I've said enough. Go practice some major pentatonic scales. I'm Corey Congilio. Please subscribe, and I'll see you on the next video. Peace.